Hello, I'm a Zephyr, and this is an explanation of Final Fantasy VII's Battle RNG. Battle RNG has a hard-coded lookup table of randomly shuffled numbers. However, unlike Field RNG, which only has one index into its hard-coded table, Battle RNG has eight indices. It also has a number that selects which of these indices is the currently active index, and to mess things up, it has another number called Joker that we will talk about later. For reference, here is the battle RNG table. It's actually different from the field RNG table for some reason. Here we have an example state of the battle RNG indices. We're going to use this arrow to represent the current index and how it's pointing to index 0. Here, the current index is 1, and we move the arrow accordingly. The game has several functions through which it interfaces with the random number generator. Rand 8 will return a random 8-bit number. Rand 16 will use two 8-bit numbers to return a random 16-bit number. Increment index will just increment the index by 1. There are also other methods that are used, but they're just functions or wrappers around rand8 or rand16 calls. Rand8 will query the RNG table with the value of the currently selected index. It'll then increment the current index. Notably, this does happen after querying the RNG table in battle RNG. It'll then return the queried value. As an example, here we've currently selected index 0, which has a value of DE. We query the random table at index DE and get the number 245. This will be our random number returned by our function. But before leaving the function, we increment index 0 to DF. RAND16 uses RAND8 to generate its low and high bytes. The current index is incremented between these two generations, unless the current joker value is 0. Joker is then incremented on RAND16 calls. In our example, we first use the same RAND8 procedure to generate the first value of 245, or hex F5, as our low byte. We then increment, and then check if joker is 0. It isn't, so we add 1 to current index. We then add 1 to our joker value as well. Afterwards, we do the same RAND8 procedure with the new current index value. This time we query for the value at index AD, which is 184, or hex B8. This is our high byte, and just as before, we increment this index to AE. Now here's an example, but this time our joker value is 0. We use the same RAND8 procedure to generate our first value of hex F5 and increment the index. This is still our low byte. This time joker is 0, so we do not add 1 to current index, but we still add 1 to our joker value. We then do the same RAND8 procedure and generate the high byte, this time hex EA, but we're doing it with the same current index value, so this time our current index didn't change because joker was 0. And again, we increment the value. Battle RNG is pretty much used for everything that's random within a battle. It's used to determine the ATB values that characters start out with when a battle starts. It's used to determine the exact damage values that attacks do, because they have slight fluctuations in the amount of damage they do. It's used to determine if attacks will miss or if they will land with a critical hit. It's used to determine whether steal or manipulate is successful. It's used to determine whether items drop from the end of battles. It's used to determine the random amounts by which stats increase when characters level up. Battle RNG is also used for this even outside the context of a battle. It's used for the random decisions in enemies' AI scripts. It's also probably used for other random events in battle, this is not a comprehensive list. Battle RNG is also used to determine the success of running away from a battle, however, this one is kind of interesting. Battle RNG is constantly called every frame at 15 frames per second in battle, but the value it returns is only actually used if you're trying to run away. This even happens on battles that cannot be ran away from. This uses RAND16, so the current index and joker values are constantly updated with these calls. This makes any form of battle RNG manipulation highly dependent on exactly how many frames pass in battle. Now, how do we seed battle RNG? How do these numbers get populated when we first start the battle? Well, battle RNG uses a 15-bit number to seed the RNG indices. The current index is always set to 0 at the start of a battle, however the joker value is just not set. It retains its value from the end of the previous battle, and joker is only ever used in battles. And also it starts at zero when the console first boots. Here's an example battle RNG seed that we're going to use to seed the battle RNG indices. We're going to start by selecting the lowest 8 bits and using that as our index zero. We're then going to take this window we have and shift it once to the left, and use this number to seed RNG index 1. We'll shift the window to the left once more, and use this to seed index 2. 
then shift again and seed for number three, shift and seed for four, and again for five, six, and seven. And as you can see, we have seeded all of the battle RNG indices and have used all 15 of our bits. Now, where did this battle RNG seed come from? Well, it depends on the version of the game you're playing. On PC or the HD console versions, system RNG is called, which returns a 15-bit number, and that's the seed. Manipulating this is another video. On the PlayStation version, however, it actually uses the lowest 15 bits of the current frame counter. It actually doesn't use system RNG at all here. Let's look more closely at one particular application of battle RNG, critical hits. In short, the game does a RAND16 call, and if the returned number is small enough, you get a critical hit. As an example, on apps in the setting of an any% percent run, Cloud's Braver will crit if this number is 661 or smaller. This number can be anything from 0 to 65,535, so this is about a 1% chance. Now, 661 is hex 295. If the high byte of the returned value is 0 or 1, the low byte can be any value, and we're still going to get a crit. Because any number that looks like 0 and then 2 digits, or 1 and then 2 digits in hex, will always be smaller than hex 295. In a preemptive battle, everything up until when the braver determines it should crit is identical. We only need to control one index to guarantee a crit. So I've got FF7 frozen right before a battle here, and we've got some watches. Here's the current frame counter, these two are the current are the battle RNG indices, this one's the currently selected index, and this one is the joker value. If we have the game go, I'm going to do a preemptive apps fight, but stop at a certain point. So if I go just a bit further forward here, you'll see right there. Um, right there, the increment, the uh, current index jumped from 2 to 5, and that was actually the braver calculations being performed. And it turns out that one of the last things that's calculated is the crit, and it just so happens the high byte does use index 5 as shown here. So the game appears to use the value of index 5 for the high byte of the crit chance. Can we control the value of index 5? Well, we'll first go back to how it initializes. When we're seeding battle RNG, it's these 8 bits here that were used to seed index 5. On PlayStation, the value of index 5 is controlled by these bits in the global frame counter. The frame counter increases by 1 about 60 times a second. The first red bit only changes every 32 increments, every 32 frames, about every half a second. This seems within the realm of feasible manipulation. So what should we set index 5 to? Well, in the battle RNG table, the values of 0 and 1 can be found at indices A3 and 7, respectively. The crit chance is calculated on the 40th increment from the start of battle. So, we need to seed index 5 to either hex 7b or hex df. Going off our formatting of the global frame counter before, it needs to look like either of these two values, with the stars being any bit. So, what values will work for the global frame counter? Well, if we take the global frame counter mod 8192, we can use any value from 3,936 to 3,967, or from 7,136 to 7,167. Now, in order to seed the global frame counter, I have to put one, a number one smaller in here, but trust me, this is seeding to 3,936. So, if I start it up and do the battle, we're going to see 3,936. And boom, that was a crit. Now we're going to try 3950. And also a crit. And you'll notice it has the exact same damage roll, and that's because the damage roll is determined as an RNG8 call immediately after the crit, uh, immediately after the crit chance. And so it also uses RNG index 5, and so it's going to be the same every time, with the same crit value. Now the highest index that should work should be 3967, so I'm going to put 3966 in here to make the seed it to 3967.
and same crit. Now, in order to see to the other window, we're going to want to see to 7136, so 7135 again. And as you can see, we get a crit, and in fact, this one has a slightly different damage roll. To try just a random value in that range, we're going to try, let's say, 7145. And we get the same crit. To again show the highest value in this range, we're going to have to see to 7167, so 7166 right here. And we get a crit. But hang on, what were all those sentences with asterisks on them for? Well, it turns out this manip is not 100% reliable. It, it depends on things that I at least consider right now to be out of our control. The first is the joker value at the start of the apps fight. This only works if the apps fight starts with a joker value of 0, 4, 6, or 7, which is a 50% chance. Also, we need to get lucky, or Cloud needs to get lucky. Cloud needs to have either 16 or 17 luck to even have a chance to crit apps. This is also a 50% chance. Overall, this manip only has a 25% chance to work, even if it were to be implemented in practice. Here is a table of the starting joker values and the RNG indices that will be used to calculate the high bite of the crit chance, respectively, and the number of increments that that index receives before that chance is calculated. As you can see, the only one that's feasible to work with is the one that we have chosen. So, how would we actually do this manip? Well, every 8192 frames, which is about every 2 minutes and 16 seconds, there would be a half second window where your frame counter was in the right range for the manip to work. Well, there would be two half second windows, one for each of the two ranges that works. My thought is that you'd probably wait on the title screen in order to align this window with when you would arrive at apps normally. Beyond that, though, more work needs to be done in figuring out how this would actually be used in a run, if this is even worth using. Still, though, I think it's interesting. Thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something new about Battle RNG today.